All aboard, come fly with us tonight. Thanks very much indeed for tuning in to another edition of DXB Today, where we are taking an influence from the air show. It's ongoing right here in Dubai at the moment. It's the biggest and the best. It's now one of the biggest around the world. And that's why we're looking at all things aviation, traditional and beyond. Let's see what's coming up tonight. Khalid heads down to the air show taking place this week. And we meet space tourist Namira Saleem, paving the way for ladies and, of course, tending to so many firsts. Incredible show. Yeah, plus we're getting very involved in the Dubai Fitness... Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're getting very involved in the Dubai Fitness Challenge or you're getting very involved in the Dubai no, Fitness Challenge? No, it's a Dina thing. It's not you and it's I. It's not a we thing. Yeah, it's not it? a we thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a I'm Dina the one thing. who... I brought my workout up, but just relax. <laughs> it's just me and no, I am not fit. It's a we thing, not <laughs> But me. I will it's make a fool of myself <laughs> on screen for your entertainment. Looking forward to uh, Dina's workout with the team from Crank a little later on. Right. Uh, we are all here um, in the midst of the air shows taking place at the Al-Maktoum International Airport down in the Dubai South area, obviously. Uh, previous air shows have been held a lot closer to where we are broadcasting now at the Dubai International Airport, but they moved it a few years ago. Bigger and better space. And well, aviation's booming at the moment. I mean, you've been hanging out there quite a bit, so tell us what you've been up to. Yeah, I mean, I have been... You know what? It's, I've been going to the air show pretty much every year since he's been running. Um, uh, because it used to, as I said, used to be at the Dubai International Airport. And it brings together, obviously, the great, uh, the great and the good from the world of aviation. And it's, it, aviation is such a part of our life here. So many people have gotten a plane to come to the UAE for the first time. So many people are using uh, planes to get for, uh, to and from for work, etc. We're such a geographical hub on the planet that aviation is key. Uh, to Dubai, to the UAE. So that's why I think the air show is so significant and it does bring out the big guns. And do you ever go and do the little mini tours of the aircrafts? Yeah, that looks very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the air show is bringing together all the major airlines from around the world, but it brings together the manufacturers as well, the great uh, plane manufacturers, brings together all those that invested in and it has a very, very cool display every single day as well. Very interesting. I love the world of aviation. I mean, I, my career started in aviation, so I've always loved, you know, just learning how airports run. I've always been fascinated with airports as a little girl running through them. My first, you know, my first experience flying. But now it's so normal. Like, yeah. kids are just like, yeah, we travel just for fun. Well, can I just say that I'm very excited. You two are very passionate and knowledgeable on this subject because I think uh, this show is going to be about me learning a thing or two. Uh, got a great lineup of guests today, including our guest co-host, who's, uh, yeah, it's an honor to have her here with us. Let's find out who it is. Hi everyone, my name's Anna Hazlitt. I'm the founder and CEO of Azurex, a space consultancy based here in Dubai, and I can't wait for today's discussion. Anna will join us right here in the hot seat in just a second. But first, Khaled went down to the Dubai Air Show, one of the largest air shows in the world, as we've talked about, to uncover the latest developments in the aviation sector. Let's take a look. Today, we're at Dubai Air Show, where we get to see new trends happening in the aerospace market. We cannot wait to see where it's going to soar sky high. I'm here with David, who's Vice President of Commercial of Etihad Engineering, where he's going to tell us all new things happening in aviation. Well, David, it's a pleasure having you here with us today. Thanks so much. what is new? So we're here basically at the Dubai Air Show, the biggest air show in the region. You can hear from the aircraft going overhead. Things are going on right now. There's some displays outside. Uh, it's basically a great opportunity for businesses to come together in the region, network, meet each other, talk about the plans for the future, what we're doing, how we're expanding, how other companies are expanding, and how basically aviation within the UAE is, is booming at the moment. We started from Dubai, following actually the vision of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum to be number one. And you can see now, this is, is advanced air mobility aircraft, and this is, is the biggest, I will say, unmanned cargo aircraft in the world. Weighs 200 kilometers, made in Dubai, and in the near future, you will see that uh, 
we are operating uh, parcel delivery. So actually we are having a factory in Dubai, manufacturer and operator as well. I think we're really focusing on an exceptional attention to detail on the, the whole customer experience, guest experience. So literally no stone has been left unturned, you know, in terms of how we manage people going through the airports, um, before they even book with us on their, on the, their digital journey, their experience in our lounges, which we, we plan to be exceptional, uh, a beautiful product on board. Can you tell us if it might be affecting or will AI take an effect in the engineering sector? I think it will eventually. At the moment, not necessarily because of the nature of the work that we do, but certainly when it comes to supply chain, and um, these are the sort of areas that will very quickly become um, not dominated by AI, but certainly enhanced by AI. And how uh, the predictive maintenance, uh, you know, when you when you need a certain number of parts, you can use certain computer systems that will help you understand how many parts you're using, and then that will predict. How, much part, how many parts you're going to use, when you're going to need them, and then it'll start pre-ordering for you. All those things that just make our job a lot easier. Aviation is soaring high, reducing carbon emissions with AI, and we're seeing more passengers take to the skies. Looking very at home there, down at the Dubai Airport. Wasn't he a pilot back in the day? Wasn't yes, he? he still is a pilot. Still is a pilot. Mm -hmm. What? How did I not know this? How random. Yeah, he was a pilot for 15 years. Why, oh, why, why didn't we have him in a plane? You know, surely that would have been the opportunity, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, right, on now to our guest co-host for today, Dubai-based investor defining uh, the future of space infrastructure through her company on a mission to generate opportunities in space sectors. Please welcome to the show, CEO of Azure X, Anna Hazlitt. Anna, thank you for being with us. Thank you. I appreciate that, you know, little bit of an aviation theme, but we want to take it further right. than the just the, 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 the normal stratosphere. Let's go a bit higher if we can. Um, space ambition yeah. is something that we've seen grow here in the UAE um, significantly in recent years. There's been a real drive uh, and investment into the space programs as well. How's your ex helping that here? Yeah, I mean, I think um, what's, what's important to note is that the, the entire space industry is going through what we call a giant leap. Um, for mankind? <laughs> for humanity. Um, so we're seeing uh, the world over, we're seeing a number of new countries enter the space race, uh, beginning with national space agencies. So I think we're close to almost 100 national space agencies that we've seen establish over the last sort of two to three years. We also see a growing interest when it comes to investing in the sector. So um, Morgan Stanley came out with a, with a piece on the size of the space sector and today it's close to $600 billion. Um, by 2040, it should reach a trillion dollars. Um, so what that really boils down to is number of active satellites, countries with national space agencies, levels of funding, uh, launches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So our role um, here is is in connecting uh, the commercial uh, space sector um, and helping international space companies come to the region. Mm. Um, the team is based here. We've been here for over three decades, so we understand the UAE and the, and the Gulf region, and we understand how committed. Um, these, this area is in terms of seeing space as a strategic and Have you sector. always been fascinated in space? I would say it was introduced to me. Um, I went to an, a conference, the New Space Europe conference, six, year, six years ago, and haven't looked back since. Really? Like, well, I, that's pretty recent, actually. Six that's years, that, exactly, yeah. yeah. It wasn't a, um, I wouldn't say it was an, uh, a vocation. Um, you know, I didn't study aerospace mm. engineering or space science. Um, but again, that just shows you that the sector really is open to lots of other people coming and being part of the growth uh, from all angles. So from our side, we're, we're a consultancy. Uh, we also invest in space tech mm. companies and we're based here. Incredible. So yeah. what is what are the opportunities? Because obviously yourself, six years ago, you saw an opportunity yeah. and you, you, know, you haven't looked back since. What are the opportunities that are available to people that might have a few different ideas, but they don't quite know that space is an option for them? Yeah, so I like to call, I like to look at this from the angle of skills or jobs of the future. So if I was to talk to, you know, my nieces and nephews um, or anyone, you know, of a certain age, I would say, you know, study um, space law or study space infrastructure 
space architecture. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the jobs and the skills that we're going to need in the future because of the sheer growth that we're seeing across the sector. So I would really start from the academic point of view, um, where I would like really encourage people to look at certain university degrees and, and skills that can be applied across the space sector. Now I want to ask you about commercial space travel. Yeah. How accessible is it? Because at the moment it feels like it's not something that's affordable except to very few people. Right. How accessible do you think it's going to be in the future? And is it something that you would ever entertain? So I would absolutely love to go to space. <laughs> um, I know that we're going to hear from um, a commercial astronaut, Namira Salim, later in the show. Um, I think what's, what's amazing is that there is the accessibility now to travel to space, and that's driven by the cost um, and the requirements uh, needed to fly. So the training is, is far less, um, and you know, we're seeing commercial companies such as Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic you know, giving certain types of, of people you know, this, this, this level of access. So it's, it's not what it used to be, which was you know, the government dominated national space agencies, nationally trained astronauts. It's you know, everyday people that have the, um, the ticket size to, to you know, the affordability. There, there still is, a, um, you know, we need to see a reduction in, in the cost, which we will with, with more supply. Um, but it is available, and we'll see. We'll hear later from Namira about how she got involved. So, do you watch for all mankind? Sorry, <laughs> right, I have to ask. <laughs> um, no, I haven't seen the oh, show. I've been re on. I've been recommended it's so good. it. <laughs> I want to know if it's just for like the common folk, or if an expert right. like you would actually still no. be as entertained. Tom, have you seen it? I have not seen it. Oh my god, <laughs> so good, guys, so good. <laughs> All right, we well, we out. have a lot more to delve into. Yeah. Uh, after the break, we're going to get into conversation with space traveler Namira Salim to discuss all things space tourism. Don't you go anywhere.